What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Another edition of Talking Ball with Bazaar. I'm Emory Hunt Bazaar of the Playbook here on the campus at Fordham University with head coach Joe Moore. Head coach, thanks for taking the time today. Appreciate you coming out to visit with us. Now, you're a Fordham guy through and through. You played here, set single season passing records as a quarterback. When this job came available, was this your dream job? Well, you know, sometimes that term dream dream job gets thrown around and, and used in uh, you know, a bunch of different contexts. I don't know if I would ever, ever necessarily say that anything is particularly a dream job, but it's certainly one that, you know, because of my history here as a player and, and uh, the potential that we all felt this place had uh, as a football program, it was certainly one that was very, uh, you know, it, it was very interesting and one that, uh, you know, I decided to pursue. Now you talk about that potential when you look at the history, it's a tradition-rich program. A lot of people don't know about that. Did that tie into your decision? Did that make that an easy decision to come back? Well, it did in, in the sense that, you know, when, when I played here, you know, the guys that come through this program are always uh, very uh, keenly aware of, of Forbes football tradition. And, and, you know, in the in the 30s, and 40s, and the 50s, it was a powerhouse on par with Notre Dame's and Penn State's. And, you know, uh, you know, the scoreless ties with Pitt playing in the Sugar Bowl and all those things, and then you know, football went away for a brief time, came back at the club level to the Division Three level, uh, eventually into the Patriot League and then to the scholarship level. So, uh, you know, we're certainly very proud of our past, and like you said, that type of thing shows you the the, uh, the potential that this place had, and you know, the ability to come back here as a head coach when and, you know we necessarily didn't achieve that level of success when I was here as a player outside of my senior year to be able to fulfill some of the potential and help elevate the program to the level we felt it could uh, 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 rise to it is very fulfilling. You mentioned the development part, Coach, and that's what I want to touch on next. Uh, just building a program. I think on a recruiting front, you know, when you look at major city programs like the Tulane, your uh, Memphis, is, your, your Maryland's, they tend to struggle to recruit guys to, to the city. And here in New York City, one of the best cities in the world, uh, you have seemed to have circumnavigated that and had a great, you know, a lot of great success here. How have you been able to pitch this to the uh, to the students to get them in? You know, really, you talk about. Uh, things that differentiate your school from the other schools that kids may be considering. And, and the way we look at it in recruiting, it's it's really a, a three-tiered approach. It's, it's, it's academics, it's football, and it's location. And not any single one of those things by itself separates us, but it's a combination of those things. When you talk about our academics, you know, being a top 30, 35 school in the country with our business school and some other areas being very highly regarded, we may not be Ivy League in that regard, but we're certainly, you know, a very uh, you know high-level academic institution, and when you add to that the uh, internships and real-world experiences, and, and we'll talk about location as experience. There's certain things that you can learn in the classroom because of our location. You know, they add a little bit of a you know, different aspect to the educational experience. And then you add to that the football part of it that you know Fordham had not had much success, and now you're talking about a team that's uh, you know. Won 29 games in three years, been to the playoffs two years in a row, has been in the top 25, I believe, for 20 some odd weeks in a row. And, you know, we're, we're guys are walking out of here with rings on their fingers. And, you know, on top of our, you know, team success, we've had a bunch of individual success. So there's some teams that are better than us in football, but not many at this point. You know, 10, 10 to 15 on, on how you look at it, or if you count the playoffs, you know, even less than that. And then we really sell the aspect of, of the. Uh, New York City experience that you know there's uh, you can come to Fordham University and it's it's the business and cultural epicenter of the world and if you come here you can pick a different thing to do 365 days a year for your four or five years here and not do the same thing and to me it's not a, a sales pitch uh, as opposed to us 
providing the information of what we feel confident about our school, and that is the academics and football in the, in the location. And we t tell kids all the time in the recruiting process, it's not a hard sell. If what we have to offer doesn't match your decision-making criteria, then it's not a good fit. If a kid wants a, a rural school, or he wants a huge stadium, or he wants you know, state-of-the-art facilities, or you know, an engineering degree, or something along those lines, then this is not the place for them. But th there is a niche of kids who are, you know, football is very important to them. Uh, you know, they want a, a great academic experience and they want to come to school in the city and you know those guys you know they fit our need and, and what we have to offer fits their criteria and, uh, you know the other thing that, that I took from coach Ed from the University of Connecticut is a type of player that we're recruiting uh, you know there, there's a specific intangible aspect that we want kids who are smart you know great communicators tough discipline pay great attention to detail care more about team success and individual recognition and, and what we're trying to do is create a self-perpetuating culture so when you add those three things that we're looking for you have those kind of kids that want what we have to offer then you add that intangible aspect I think it, it's allowed us to recruit a very uh, high caliber student athlete and person into our program. One of my favorite questions coach is always philosophy because I, I, I like to pick people's brains and see what makes them tick why they do certain things the way they do and watch you guys over the last three seasons, and you know, live and in person, I think you guys have done a great job with on the field, and the guys seem to really love the game. So, what's your coaching philosophy? You know, first and foremost, you know, as a, as a college football coach or a coach at any level, you have to feel blessed with the opportunity to come to work every day and, and live your passion. You know, I mean, there's a million other things that you could be doing, and you, you, you see people who, you know, go to work and don't enjoy their job, or you know. Uh, and go in and they're punching the clock, you know, you know, just to get through a day. You know, every day, every day I come to work, I feel, like I said, blessed with the opportunity to be involved in the game that has given me so much. But from a philosophical standpoint, you know, we were obviously an attacking uh, type of outfit, offensively, defensively, and special teams-wise, where we're, you know, up tempo, no huddle. You know, 70 plus, 75 plus plays per game the past three years. Broke the, the uh, school and league record in scoring two years in a row. So, you know, we have basic basic tenets of that offense uh, of the spread that I won't go into tremendous right. detail to because but but we want to be up tempo. We want to be attacking. We want to dictate. Uh, you know the speed of the game and we want to get our kids in the best play possible against the look that's presented and I think that's one of the things of being no huddle and having the coaches change the play you know, that, that affords you that opportunity. Uh, defensively you know, we've done a great job creating turnovers, creating negative yardage plays, getting off the field in third down particularly in red zone defense with that same thought process. We want to uh, dictate the tempo of the game uh, to the opposing offense and obviously with Patrick Murray and Michael Miranda in our return game uh, we've had that same you know, thought process in our special teams game as well. And, and really, it sounds simplistic, but when we talk as a coaching staff of relative to the things that we want to do scheme related, there's, there's really three simple criteria. Is it sound? Can we teach it? Can they execute it? And if it doesn't meet any of those criteria, we don't put it into our game plan. And, uh, you know, we, we, we we're a high energy, younger staff. You know, I'm 41, so I'm, I'm the elder statesman now, which didn't always used to be the case, but, you know, we, we want our kids to know that it's still a game. You don't ever, you know, when you were young, you never you know, talked to your mom or dad and said, I'm going down the field to work a game of football. You say, I'm going to go play a game of football. And, you know, and I'm not saying we're, we're not uh, demanding on our kids and we don't coach them to do things right all the time. But at the same time, I think there's got to be a degree of, uh, you know, working them to be their best and be very demanding and at the same time helping them understand that it is still a game. So uh, I think we have a great relationship with our kids and I think they know that we care as much about them as people as we do before we care about them as players. And when you have that trust level from your players and you know that they're not just, the coaching staff is just not viewing you as a number or a person to, to run around or win the game. And they're, uh, you know, personally invested in your welfare as a student and as a person. Uh, they're you know, very apt to, you know, put forth, put forth the best effort in, in games and practices. Now, just with your football program has been outstanding, and you've seen the growth of the Patriot League, which I think is probably one of the tougher conferences in the FCS. Now, does the growth of the league kind of help you guys? I know you guys don't need it, but kind of help you guys from staying complacent, or uh, getting complacent, and, and constantly building this program to help, you know, rise, raise the, the level of the league? Yeah, I mean, you look at the league top to bottom, and, you know, every week you go into a Patriot League game, you know it's going to be a dogfight, and you know we've had some epic battles with Bucknell over the past uh, three years. I don't, I'm not sure any of the game has been has been decided by you know three points one way or the other. And obviously Lehigh and Lafayette, and Colgate have had 
you know, tremendous runs in the league, winning a, you know, a bunch of titles, Holy Cross is a story program. Coach Gilmore does a great job there. And, you know, Coach Scarlato, who I was on staff with at Georgetown when I was assistant there, you know, seems to, uh, you know, have it going down there in the right direction. So, uh, we, um, I think that having to be on top of your game every single week in the league and knowing that the, the winner of the league gets an automatic bid kind of helps you avoid complacency from that standpoint. Uh, but for us, I think that's more of a, a, a program um, kind of concept than it is a Patriot League thing that, mm -hmm. that our guys know that you know we compete against a standard, not against an opponent. So when we come out every day, whether it's a meeting, it's a practice, it's a game, anything we do that's football related, we talk about playing to a championship standard or anything less than that is not acceptable. So hopefully, you know, we've had some success and we talk about guys not reading their press clip things and you know doing things that, you know, take away from what we need to do to be successful. A, a saying that, that we have a leadership academy here uh, with, with the uh, Jansen Foundation, they said, what well, got you where you are is not going to get you where you need to go. And uh, our guys know that we need to stay humble and hungry and know that, uh, as, as the saying in our locker room says, the season starts today. So no matter what happened yesterday or the day before, good or bad, you have to come out today and give a championship effort. Now you guys have done a great deal over the last three seasons coaching that. I just think it's going to continue to grow and grow, and I wish you guys the best of luck and appreciate you ah, taking time. Thanks, I appreciate it. Thank no you. Problem. Yes, sir.